No man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. Let's get to our feet and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. First, welcome your neighbor on the left and on the right. I know you welcomed them earlier, but do it for me again, just to make sure that nobody has been ignored. Welcome them, tell them you are in the right place, at the right time, among the right people. And tell them God is going to bless your socks off. Hallelujah. I want to honor all the pastors and ministers of the gospel who are here. Come on, let's celebrate them. The bishops, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers. I have some wonderful friends all the way from Zimbabwe. Did I get that right? Come on, let's welcome those wonderful people. Good to see you. Hallelujah. They love Fanero. They just came to fellowship with us and then they go back home. Isn't that humbling? Hallelujah. Let's worship Jesus. Lion of Judah, we worship you. Lion of Judah, you are holy. Lion of Judah, we worship you, Lion of Judah, you are holy. Let's worship the Lord. Sing, we worship you.
breath. Come and raise your voice. Jesus, come and touch my destiny. There's no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns. the soul rock I stand oh love of rounds sinking sand Yeah. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Katalelebo, Shatalala Mambra de Gatalapa. Oh, Shalala Bradega Zombre Ketele Payalebo. De Rabo Zayele, Satayere Rebo, Shayatala. Eh, Kotalala Brandebo, Sayalala. Eh, Shalelebo. Say a Somebody worship Jesus. Raise those holy hands and tell him, Lord, I love you. Erra ba zombra kata lelebo. Ela zombra le kata. E ya rombre zila lo bada le kata lapa. Come on, worship with your own words. In your own soul. Re kaya la la mando bra le kata ye. Ko se lelebo ra de nega. E ya so lebo ro. Masaya la la la. Ebra rega zombra rega tala lele bayale ayala la e ambro rega zombre ketelele shola la bayale 
Somebody raise your voice and lift your hands and worship God. The Bible says, lift up holy hands. Lift up holy hands. The Bible says, I will therefore that all men pray. Lifting up holy hands. It's a sign of worship. It's a sign of adoration. It's a sign of reverence. It's a sign of agreement with the spirit of truth. Repalambro de getele pare de gozi gatalapa. Eya rando se pra re gatalande koya rara de de bosh. E resende de de bosi gatalala marot. Rasombra de gatalapa ya la laba. Eya rana basombre ketele pa ya laba. Robo sine lele barra re gazombra kata. Sombra re gazele pro robo gose kete. Rebo se que te le marro pra regazando que te Ropa sombra de que sola para regazo Ira ma sombra catalapa Rico si le pa te le pa Psalms 141 verses 2 says Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice Rica landa de ma sombra que te le pa Ropa sole ma sombra que te le pa ya de Robo si gatala man tala payale Iro pro rugo si fra katala payeke Morre ma sombra katala payale Eri ma sombra kataye mala telepa Elebo rada da sombra katala paye Sonde re barra de gato ya payata Sarra ma sombra le kata Orre ma sombre re koshi la bada Ropa en sombre ke anda sombri ke telepade Zobre ke esele mantoli patalaba Zode de gazanda katalaba la de gazalapa Orre pa de gazombra di gazalape Zore ba zombre ke telepa yalapa Erika zombre hezelepa Roba zanda katalayapa Ropele ke telemanda reba de gazombre ke te Orika ba di gazombra katalapa May the sick be healed Ire ma zombra katalapa Ezore bazanda kata If you're sick in your body Eri bazore kole mantele pa May you receive your healing Ringa zore patala telemando preregeshe Robo zika yala mantala pa yala Robo zende ketele pa yara raba zombre kete Receive your healing Riba zanta le pa yara bare de bo zembra kata Receive your healing Receive your healing Receive your healing Riba zanda kata ye pa barade Receive your breakthrough Iri manda raba zombra kata Ere ba santa la bayara raba Re kata ya manta la pa ye le pa Roba za kata la pa Re ga zombra kata Re le ba zambra kata Re ke te le marando bra re kata Re se le ke te le pa Le ke le manda salama Raba zanda ka te le pa Ropo se ke te le pa Rama sapra rabada Ropo si ka ta la man ta la pa Re ke se ke te le pa Ropo si ka ra raba zambra le ka ta ya E re ma santa la ba de ka zombri Re ke te le pa ya da de ka ta la pa Ropo si ka ra raba zambri ke te O re ke te le pa ya da Zore ka sa ya ta ande O pra re ka ta Move something this evening. 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 Rataya mantala paya rabadega zombra kata. 
Reba zambra kata Esho riba rada da zombra ka Riba de zombre ketelepa Esho riba vade Zombra de gataya One more minute Merendo kosiene Eze riba de de go zembra de Ikatale palanda deba Satan has no place in your house He has no place in your body He has no place in your ministry He has no place in your marriage He has no place in your children he has no place. The Bible says here, uh, hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world has nothing. He has nothing in me. I declare upon your life that the devil has nothing in you. Sickness is not yours. Poverty is not yours. Struggle and strife are not yours. Repalanda cobra de gasata. Ibra de gazanda la para regato. Raata e palando e e raba zombra katelepa i sombra e da ne gazalapa e riba zombra ne gazalapa e he has nothing he kept nothing he can keep nothing i panda zombra le gata my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost riba katelepa ya ne kota disease cannot dwell there sickness cannot dwell there in the mighty name of Jesus i papa la tamamarande. The word of God works on my veins, works on my body, works on every part of my being. In the mighty name of Jesus, all my organs are functioning well. Supernormal in the mighty name of Jesus. My vessels are working right. My sight is sharp. My hearing is, is well. In the name of Jesus, my understanding is getting better and better. My Okay. It is the law of the spirit of life in Christ. It has set me free from the law of sin and death. Come on, let's give the Lord a man of praise. Thank Him because of what He has done and what He's going to do. Thank Him because of what He has done. Come on, celebrate like you know God has already done something and He's going to do something. Hey, come on. I say celebrate God like you know He has done something and He's about to do more. In Jesus' name, that's an act of faith. That's an act of faith. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The seats. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Someone is walking, is starting to walk. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Yes. The devil has nothing in you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, let's celebrate the choir. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many are excited on men gather? Oh, that's better, gentlemen. Let's do it again. Men gather. 20th April. Oh, did you hear that? The ground shook. Hallelujah. People in the back, kindly take your seats out to make sure everybody has a seat on the exception of the ushers and the security people. Men gather is here. And that day, after much consultation, the men say they want the day to start early. Praise the Lord. We wanted it to start maybe in the afternoon, but they felt no. We want it to start early. So as early as 9 a.m., the gates are going to be open. You have to give us that day. Hallelujah. In the morning, we are going to begin with fitness session where you're going to do aerobics. I think it's going to be the biggest number of men doing aerobics in the morning. Hallelujah. Then we're going to have board games and then we're going to have different games. Arm wrestling, tug of war. Hey, hey, somebody shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Of course, there is, there is an exciting competition on Know Your Car. 
and then and many other things we're going to be doing of course there's going to be showcases from the banking sectors real estate those of you who want to invest in real estate we're going to have people from agriculture sector education and stuff so you come as you're having fun but you're also learning and you're acquainting yourself with how life works isn't that wonderful yes so that day come early come early the first speaker gets on at 2 p.m sharp hallelujah back to back back to back it's going to run so fast you won't believe it by the time you go home you won't believe hallelujah so pastor pojo emma day is with us my brother the reverend julian kula is going to be with us my brother dancing or khan is going to be with us apostle grace is going to be with us <laughs> and many others hallelujah glory to god i'm not excited i'm excited yeah in an american accent i'm excited hallelujah praise the lord jesus women's conference is also here <laughs> praise the lord it's gonna be epic but now let us enjoy our moment praise god let the men enjoy their moment we we have how many weeks do we have? Huh? Next week only. So we have one week too. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm excited for what God is going to do that day. Our lives are not going to remain the same. Huh? Okay. Tomorrow we are here. We are here. Praise the Lord. We're almost coming to the end of the Fridays unless God tells me otherwise praise god but tomorrow is going to be wonderful i will take some time to pray for the sick i'm well possessed crazy mental issues bring them tomorrow i have time in the evening i'll share something small and then pray but it's really prayer from 5 p.m i can come on probably about 6 30 share about 30 minutes and then pray pa, 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 to the end praise the lord so how many of you are going to be there tomorrow evening? Hallelujah. Yes, bring the sick, bring the sick, bring the sick. I feel God wants to do mighty things. Let me bless your offerings, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bless you for the generosity of your people. I pray that you will supply all their needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And all saints said, Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the message? I said, are you ready for the message? <laughs> Hallelujah. Today, I want to preach a sermon entitled, Capturing the Commanding Presence. Capturing the Commanding Presence. If you're writing, because I know some of you are lovers of writing notes, which is a very good thing. One white man said, that the palest ink is greater than the most retentive memory. It's a good thing to write. It's a good thing to write. Do you know that, some of you maybe didn't know this, but do you know that even heaven writes our revelations? How many of you knew it? Yes. Heaven writes our revelations. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. It says, they that feared the Lord spoke often to one another. And the Lord what? They feared the Lord, so they spoke often to one another. It was a place of fellowship. And the Lord hearkened. He heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. And that thought upon his name. So what does God remember when you sit to commune? what you're communing about. That's what he writes about. So if God writes, hmm, you should write too. Tell your neighbor you should write. So are you ready for the message? Psalms 91. And I'm going to read the first verse because that's the place of emphasis. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth 
in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This is one of those verses very few people understand. Yet, it's generally used. It's generally applied in prayer, in our mutual confessions concerning the things of God. But not many people understand the meaning of that one verse. And it's from there that I'm going to derive everything that I feel God has laid on my spirit as burden to give you this evening. And I pray by God, if you can understand this to the depth and magnitude of what this means, your life will never remain the same again. This is one of those milestone summons. You know those milestone summons? One of those things you have to repeat and repeat and repeat until you can preach it yourself, until your spirit can understand it. Because it carries such a depth. And amazing, the whole afternoon, when I got this revelation to share this, even when I had the full understanding of what the Lord wanted me to share, for most of the part, I was praying for the language to be able to articulate the convictions of this text because I need so much language, spiritual language, I mean, but God will help me. He that dwelleth in the secret place, we all know what the secret place is. It's a place of fellowship, isn't it? It's a place of prayer. It's a place of intimacy with God. He says, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth in the secret place, in the place of prayer. I'm talking to people of covenant who understand the importance of prayer. Who understand the importance of intimate relationship with the Father. Who understand the importance of fellowship. When you put aside whatever you're supposed to do, and then you say, let me go to church and spend some time with my God. Yes, he's using this vessel. But you don't come to meet Apostle Grace. You come to meet God, isn't it? For those of you who are not able to make it here, but you're on television somewhere or you're streaming in your home, in your car, but you always have that demand on your spirit to be one or in consonance with God's will and purposes. So you find yourself hungry for the things of the spirit. You find yourself craving for the word of God, you, you want to be where the presence is. God says, for people who have learned this, who have cultivated the discipline and culture of having an intimate place, a fellowship with God, he says, they shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, this Last sentence, the shadow of the Almighty is what I wanted to take time to explain. The shadow of the Almighty. For instance, if I am walking with my little daughter, all right, and the sun is at some angle, and then as she's standing with me, sort of my image casts a shadow on the ground, and that daughter of mine is standing under that shadow it means that they are the sun is not able to touch her because she's under sun shadow but it's also a place of protection because it spells the degrees of proximity you cannot sit under the shadow of a person or a thing in whose proximity you're not. You agree? But what does this shadow do? This shadow, this covering, is the thing that evokes the presence of God that you see move, function, operate 
with certain individuals. I'm talking about the manifested presence of God. There is a law that exists in the realm of the living that I believe not many people fully understand or are able to explain if they understand. It's revered, it's admired, it's also in some way, was in sometimes resented because it comes with a lot of influence, if you might call it. But this law is the law of the commanding presence. That's what I'm trying to teach about. The law of the commanding presence. It's a very spiritual law. Deeply spiritual because it's birthed from inner realms. But yet it's very tangible. Its essence is very tangible and it commands such authority and power as it captivates those who can identify it on an individual. And it evokes a sense of respect and honor effortlessly. It evokes a sense of attention effortlessly. When you understand how this law works, it charges your realm in such a unique way and puts you at favor and advantage with the living and the non-living, the animate and, inan and inanimate. It's, it's, let me give you an example for some of you to understand this. Have you been around certain people whom you can get in their presence and you had a lot of words and you find that you can't speak? You, has somebody ever experienced that? Put up your hands if you've ever experienced that. You have a lot of words, for example. You come in proximity of an individual and you don't know what to say. It's the commanding presence. That law is active in their lives. There are people whom you can get in proximity with and start shaking. You feel like you're losing your feet. There are people who even if they look at you, you can't stand them staring at you because of the piercing that comes from their eyes, because of the commanding presence that they carry. There are people, if they entered a room, even if they entered very silently, you'd sense that they've entered a room because they command a certain presence. There are people, and as it varies in degrees, there are people who you can even sense if they're in a community, a locality or not. There are people whom you can sense whether they're in a country or they're not in a nation. When they're in a nation, they command a certain presence on their lives that makes you show, um, shows you, sorry, that their essence or person is in that country, it's in that territory. There are people that are hard to say no to. Not because they are very handsome. Not because they are very beautiful. Not because they have a lot of money. But they have a commanding presence. There are people you can't just walk to and harm. You can't just say, I'm going to slap this person. And you walk to them and slap them. Even if somebody dared you and gave you money. You can't just slap them. There are people you just can't walk to and insult because they have a commanding presence around them and the glory that preserves their name and identity is so strong and it's as though God zealously protects who they are. And God says, if you learn to dwell in the secret place, you shall abide under that shadow. This is the shadow. Am I making a point here? This is a shadow. This law transcends mere words and actions. It's, it resonates with a very deep, deep grace that I have seen operating on the lives of those few 
who have had the opportunity to understand and capture it for their own. I believe with every conviction in my heart that God has designed this law to work to the advantage of everybody that bears the divine essence, especially those men and women who have entered a covenant relationship with God. And it is for your good. Hallelujah. In scripture, you see men who carried this amazing presence. Spoken of David. And when you saw David, you loved him. It's spoken of Joseph. And when you saw Joseph, you loved him. You understand what I'm saying? You loved him. They carried a certain presence. Because if you don't know how to command that presence, right? By God. And they emphasize by God. You'll only command it through domineering. You command it through um, manipulation. You command it through coercion. You command it through an overbearing sense or attitude. You command it through some physical force. If a Nami man has a gun and they stand before you and tell you move and then you run away, that's not what I'm talking about. Yes, they have a commanding presence, but it's birthed from carnal realms. If a very strong man stands before you and tells you, I'm going to beat you up, and the, for the fear of being beaten, he tells you, go, and you run away. That kind of commanding presence is birthed from a carnal realm. That's not the one I'm talking about because there are two ways you can earn it. You can either earn it by learning to dwell in the presence of the Lord or you will earn it through using carnal means. But when I was defining this law, I said that this kind commands attention and respect effortlessly. No coercion, no manipulation, no taking advantage, no deception, nothing. Why? Because it's defined from a godly pattern. You might never understand its importance until the day you need it. Until the day you need it. But like I said and I emphasize, every child of God needs this law to be activated heavily on your life. Heavily on your life. That's the shadow on our lives. That's what they call that person. You've heard people say things like, that person or that lady or that man walks with a certain presence. This is the law I'm talking about. And you need it. And it's amazing. When you carry it, the demons respond to you differently. Demon spirits sense it. They know it. They understand it. That's why even in the faith, there are certain people who can easily command demons than others because they have that commanding presence. You get it? There are people who can take 20 minutes, 30, 45 minutes rebuking out devils. And there are people who can just look at them or point at them or even get in a place and stand just in one area like this. And the demon knows that this person has arrived. What do you want with me? Sometimes you've seen people screaming in meetings, demons screaming out of them even before they are dressed because they sense the commanding presence. They respect that law. And for some of you, spiritually, this is the attack that is mostly hidden on your life. Because if the devil comes to strip you, that's the one thing he can deliberately strip you of and find yourself in a place where you are less 
wherever you're standing, you are less of every man in that area. You are less of every individual that you stand before or among. And there are people who have been attacked so badly by the devil because they don't understand how important or even when the attack comes, they don't know that it's actually an attack on your life to dim your star. Because if you're not illuminated in the spirit, because that's the essence of the word, it's to illuminate you, isn't it? It's to illuminate you. That the eyes of your understanding will be flooded with light. He says you are the light of the world. You're the luminary of this world. When the Bible says that the world dwells in darkness, we're not talking about physical darkness. We're talking about spiritual darkness. This realm is controlled by the prince of the world, which is Satan. And there's gross darkness in the places where the gospel is least preached. The Bible says, ye are the light of the world and you're the city set on a hill. You cannot be hid. You should not be hid. But how can you go to a place and you feel hidden? And not for the right reasons for your protection. But hidden for the reasons that the devil does not want you to be identified announced and introduced the way you should be announced and introduced. Why do certain people get in certain places and they immediately find divine favor with everybody they meet and another person enters and they live a pungent experience. Somebody doesn't even want to relate with you. They look at you and you look like a thief. How can you look like a thief? Yet you're not a thief. Your image is corrupted by the work of Satan. And some of you walk with that reproach every day without knowing. You walk with that reproach every day without knowing. That is why you must understand the importance of prayer. I'm not just talking about routine prayer. I'm talking about intimate prayer. The relationship that you build with God that goes beyond time and periods. It's defined by unction. You can pray anywhere, anytime. You carry a God consciousness all the time. It's one of those laws that will guarantee the preservation of this law. Because remember, I've said this once or twice. That some laws are hinged on other laws. That's a deep sermon as well I could teach one day. Some laws are hinged on other laws. Right? So this law, the commanding presence, is hinged on the law that governs prayer. You must understand how to pray first. Because some of you, even your prayer life is warped. It's wrong. Some of you even pray, but you pray amiss, if I may say it that way. You don't know how to pray right. You pray defeated. You pray victimized. And then you carry that image in the spirit. And then you meet a person and you look the image of a victim. Not a victor. Then you understand or appreciate later why they could not hire you. Because you are a victim. May God help you understand the depth of what he is speaking to you this evening. Are you following what I'm saying? You need it. It will brighten you. It will bring things that you've never dreamt of to you effortlessly. It will invite the things you've been seeking some of you, you're seeking things that should be pursuing you. You understand what I'm saying? But it will invite those things because you command the presence of those things. And it's amazing how all the laws of the universe are attracted to the presence of God. 
Because in there, they carry their definition, their identity, and their distinction. In him, the Bible says, all things consist, which is the head of all principality and power. Creation groans for the manifestation of the sons of God. What, in essence, is the defining mark of this sonship? Glory, presence. Presence. The scriptures are very clear that even the trees rejoice when they see the righteous. These things, these things on the earth you see, they rejoice when they see the righteous. The mountains skip when they, see, when they sense the presence. Hallelujah. Now, tell me what a man or woman who carries that presence will look like before these things. The protection and preservation under that shadow. Psalms 121 verses 4, if you read the Amplified Version. Now he talks about what happens when somebody is under that shadow, that protection. Firstly, it's a protecting realm. The commanding presence is a protective realm or protecting realm. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleeps. sleep. Sorry. He says, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shed. Shed is what? Shadow. Isn't it? The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shed. Now, do you connect with Psalms 91? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, it says here that the Lord is your keeper and he is your shed. He's your keeper and he is your shed on your right hand. The side not carrying a shield. He says, the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. Who understands the meaning of this? Let me make sure you do. In the realm of the spirit, There is a grace that conquers the elements to work against you or for you depending on your positioning. So it's, just, it's not just the physical sun. We're not talking about the physical sun and the physical moon. Some people think we're talking about the physical sun and the physical moon. Uh-uh. We're not talking about the physical sun and the physical moon. Remember the Bible says that the sun rules by day. The luminary that rules by day is the sun. And the luminary that rules by night is the moon. Okay, so now here we're talking about a rule. A system operating in the world, not on the earth, but in the world. Earth is a place of abode for all humanity and living, other living things, right? But world is a system. When we talk about world, when you say it's a wonderful place, it's a beautiful thing to live in this world, you're talking about systems that compel, govern, and instruct the laws that operate on the earth. You get it? Have you gotten the difference between world and us? So, when we're talking about the sun and the moon, it's more than just the physical. We're talking about the sun and the moon in the language of the world. The eons, the ages. For example, when the Bible says, weeping may endure but for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Does that mean that every night you cry? In this instance, the word here, night, means the place of ignorance. The place of ignorance is the place of darkness in the sisters. You get it? The Bible says in Genesis, in the beginning, the earth was without form. And the Bible says it was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Ignorance was upon the face of the deep. And God said, 
let there be light. You see, the first thing he commanded to come into existence was the light. That light is not the sun. In the beginning, the earth was without form. It was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the earth. And the Bible says, and the water, sorry, and God said, let there be light. And he says, there was light. Are you following what I'm saying? When he said there was light, it was the light that he created that would give essence to everything created because he had to create everything under that light. You get it? He had to create everything under that light. That is the light under which everything is created. Definite article, the light, not a light, the light. You go down in Genesis 1.14, he explains, he said, let there be lights under the light that he created in Genesis 1.3. Are you following what I'm saying? He, he comes now in under that light and creates lights. He didn't call them V. The. There's no definite article there. He said, let there be lights. And he says, in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let, there be, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Verses 15, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Verses 16, and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars also. That was the fourth day. You see what I'm saying? Now, separate the light that he uses to create the lights. You get it? And these, light, these lights that rule by day and rule by night. You get it? Now, let me take you back. I told you I, was, I prayed for the language because you need to understand this. When the Bible says the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night, and there are days you don't have the moon, and there are days you cannot see the moon in the sky, and there are days, there are days the moon does not appear. You understand? But to them, how does the moon smite? Okay, you could understand the, the, the sun and how much heat it would give, but how does the moon smite? We're not talking about physical lights. We're talking about systems. World systems. For example, if somebody goes through a season of poverty, they can say, man, the sun has been bright in my house. It could mean, you Africans understand this, that it's been going through financial trouble. You, you get it? So when I say that weeping shall endure but for a night, but joy cometh in the morning, it's not that every night people cry and every morning people are happy. There are people who are going to wake up tomorrow morning somewhere in the world, not you who are listening to me, and they're going to wake up to bad news. So how does that portion of scripture apply. This night is a place of ignorance and the morning is a place of knowledge. Are you following what I'm saying? In other words, weeping may endure when you're ignorant but joy will come at the onset of revelation. You get it? It's like you go through circumstances and you don't know what to do and then you come to a sermon, for example, and a preacher preaches a very strong one. And then you came silent and sad, and then you go back excited and happy. That was your morning. You understand? Your night was when you were in a place of despair, confusion, and trouble. But when knowledge comes, that's what brought Jesus Christ as the light of the world. He is the light that lights every man that cometh into this world. 
That's why he's called the morning star. Jesus is called the morning star and the true light. You get it? He says we have a sure word of prophecy to which we do good to take heed to as a what? Light that shineth in what? In a dark place. This word is a light that shines in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arises in your heart. That's Christ in essence. So, let's go back to Psalms. He says that he, the sun shall not smite you by day. In other words, you will not see evil days. And the moon by night. But when the world is either up or down, you have a steadfast commitment from heaven to go upward and forward in every circumstance of your life. That's a man who is not smitten by the sun and the moon. In other words, the elements of the earth do not affect your progress. None whatsoever. Somebody shout, Amen. You're not subject to the elements. That's why I said in the realm of the spirit, there are people for whom these elements work against. The sun works against them. The moon works against them. There's troubles that come in the night. There's troubles that come in the day. There's some people, their troubles are in the day. There's some people, their troubles are in the night. When it's nighttime, they get very unexplainable attacks. And during the day, they're okay. You're subject to the attacks of the elements of the world. Ian. You understand what I'm saying? These are the systems that define how well or badly we live on the earth. He says, the Lord will keep you, verse 7, from all evil. Now this is the emphasis. He will keep you from some evil. Did he say some evil? Come on, come on. He said he will keep you from all evil. Somebody say, I am kept from all evil. Say it again. Confess it. Say, I am kept from all evil. It's the responsibility of the commanding presence to make sure that some diseases don't just come. Some attacks don't just come. Those accidents don't just kill you on the road. Those stray bullets don't enter your body. These airborne diseases do not afflict you. It's the responsibility of the commanding presence on your life because it commands them and says no. No. He says, verses 8, the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. Why? Because he has promised before he will keep your life. In verse 7, he said, he will keep your life. He will keep your life. That's why he says now, he will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Why? Because they were dwelling under the shadow. The commanding presence went with them. That's how he preserves his holy ones. Tell your neighbor, capture it. In Hosea chapter 14, verse 7, he further emphasizes. He says, they that dwell under his shadow, he said, shall return. This is the spirit and the power of restoration. Such people, it doesn't matter what they lose or how much they lose. They return. They're restored and they restore. They always have a fixed law to their advantage to restore, to revive, to rebuild everything they've lost. When you understand how to command that kind of presence on your life, nothing lost cannot be regained. Nothing built and broken cannot be rebuilt again. Somebody shout hallelujah. Why? Because you have captured 
the law of the commanding presence. He says that they that dwell under his shadow, what a beautiful scripture, shall return. The Bible says they shall revive as corn. They shall revive as corn, as corn. They shall revive. In other words, that kind of man cannot be buried by scandal. He cannot be buried by blackmail. He cannot be buried by hypocrisy. He cannot be buried because you gave him a termination letter. She cannot be destroyed because you chased her out of your house, landlord. You understand what I'm saying? She cannot lose face because you chucked her. No, something, something, the presence of God. God commands things to align back in the time when she needs them aligned. He needs them aligned because that's what God has designated for our preservation. You need to capture these things. People with that kind of presence, they can rebuild. You can laugh at them today. You can write them off. You're sure if they are gone, and tomorrow they sprout out from the least expected places in the least expected time with a greater glory than when you buried them. Because when you buried them, you forgot they were seeds. Somebody shout amen. There were seeds. When you buried them, you only gave them the opportunity to grow roots. To come out stronger than when they were, when you dealt with them from a surface point of view. Those kinds of people don't worry about what you do to them. Because they know that this presence invited that glory, shall invite it again. That is the difference between men who know how to find their way and men who are lost. When we're talking about lost Christians, we're talking about people who don't know how to command such laws. When they lose it, they don't know how to rebuild it. But there are people you'd waste time to fight. They will always spring back. They will always, you can write, you can talk, you can accuse, you can do all you want and they'll always stand up and revive us corn. Why? Because the presence on their lives cannot leave them down. Shout amen. The Bible says, and they will grow as the vine. Hallelujah. They will grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. They will grow as the vine. They will grow. They grow. They always grow because the presence grows. Tell your neighbor the presence grows. Tell them again the presence grows. They will grow as the vine. And the scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. They emit a certain scent in the spirit. Give me the message version of that portion of scripture. Isaiah 14 verse 7. He says, those who live near him huh, will be blessed by, be him, by him, sorry. Be blessed and prosper like golden grain. Everyone will be talking about them. Spreading their fame as the vintage children of God. Did you understand what I'm saying? Everybody, even those who hate you, will be talking about you, but they will be talking about you anyway. Somebody shout amen. You shall not, cannot be ignored because of the princes on your life. Those who are to do you good will discuss you. You'll come in their mind somehow. Those who are to advantage you, they, they will sit on their table and you're the one that will come to their head if they seek anybody to bless. Whatever they have in their hand, the Lord shall put your name on it. Why? Because you command something and you know how to get from places they don't know how to receive from. This law will change your life. I repeat, this law will change your life. Prosperity will pursue you and overtake you. No person who lives under that kind of commandment can be broke. You cannot be poor when the law is working to your advantage. Everything you do, it has the special workings of God. It's evident and will be evident that the hand of God on you is mighty. He will speak for you. 
Deuteronomy 28 verses 2, he says, this blessing shall overtake you. I'm not talking about, eh, eh, eh. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about them catching up with you. I'm talking about them overtaking you. Do you understand it? I'm not talking about wealth catching up. I'm talking about wealth overtaking you. I'm not talking about joy catching up with you. I'm talking about joy overtaking you. In other words, it's not only behind you and with you, it's ahead of you. You wake up into joy. You wake up into success. You wake up into prosperity. You wake up into progress. You wake up into divine health. You wake up into advantage. You wake up into favor. You wake up into increase. You wake up into multiplication. 2026 starts to plan for you. 2028 starts to advantage you. 2029 starts to speak for you. 2040 introduces you. 2050 announces you. Why? Because you are overtaken. Slap one person and tell them they are talking about me. If you're on YouTube, type that. Sharabada zombre kete le badeka. Rekata pole badeka zombre kete. Capturing the commanding presence will change your life. Can you imagine? Some people are care, sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. But there are people who are certain of next year. There are people who are certain of next decade. There are people who are certain of next century. There are people who already know that they are advantaged as golden grain in every circumstance, in every situation, in every age or period of human existence. The laws of the universe and the forces of life are going to work to their advantage. Whether the devil wants it or not. Whether it's a wrong leader or a right leader. Whether the economy is up or it's down. Whether the nation has oil or it doesn't. The laws of the spirit are working for their good. I was once young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, they are sit begging bread. May this presence on your life speak to your children. May this presence of your life preserve the ch the ch your children's children's future. May this presence on your life speak to a thousand generations. Because the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord is to a thousand generations. My seed will not die early. My seed will not lack. My seed will not suffer under the hand of the tyrant. Under the the hand of the persecutor my seed will not pay prices of things that they have not of things they don't deserve are you following what i'm saying your seed will not be buried by hiv it won't be buried by cancer accidents are far from your children because of the presence on your life, you're commanding the days to come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Such boldness have we toward God. That's how you can say that my seed won't fail. My seed is a prosperous seed. My seed is a progressive entity on the earth. Wherever they go, my children will never be victims. They'll never be survivors. Survivors, sorry. Wherever they be, they'll be heads and not the tail. In the name of Jesus. Because of the presence. Look at Joseph. One man. He carried such an anointing that for hundreds of years, the Jew was a success in Egypt because of the anointing on Joseph. They would plant the seed and the seed remembers Joseph and it grows. They, they would, they would, they would met animals together and they bring forth stronger stock because it remembered who Joseph was. Are you following what I'm saying? They'll go to lands and put a brick on the ground and that land starts to build that house. Why? Because it knew Joseph until the Bible says a king arose which knew not Joseph. That was when they were taken to captivity. But as long as any king would design the anointing on Joseph he would do the Israelite good even in a foreign land this one it does not care whether you are in your own home or you're outside your home it doesn't care whether the people you are among are of the same language or not it doesn't care whether you're in the in a country of people of the same color or not or the same ethnicity or not it doesn't matter
matter whether you they are credible or, or you're, you're, you're not credible. It doesn't matter whether they are approved by some system which does not approve you. When you step there, the presence will fulfill and cover your shortcoming. You don't need to be the smartest. You just need to be the most anointed. You don't need to be the, the most beautiful. You just need to be the most anointed. You don't need to be the most educated. You just need to be the most anointed. Even in the places they least expect you, you shall enter. Because of the presence of God. Somebody shout, I capture it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Woo! The yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. I said the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. I said the yoke shall be taken away from your shoulder. It shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Sickness has no place because of the anointing. Your marriage will be restored because of the anointing. Your womb will open because of the anointing. Your business shall succeed because of the anointing. You shall get a better job because of the anointing. Your ministry will progress because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. That commanding presence, it shall speak to you and it shall speak for you. You won't need to introduce yourself. You'll enter and you'll be introduced. <laughs> I've found myself in places my degree couldn't take me, my education could not even try, my accent, nothing. But you find yourself in a place. And cancer will hear you. The man has everything, but he's on a deathbed. And then you stretch out your hand and say, ka -ta -ta -la -pa -yay! Ha -shambra -de -gata. Sit down for a few minutes. Ha -ya -ya -ya. He says, You shall be as the wine of lebanon because of the scent that will come out of you now i understand this is exactly what paul was talking about when he spoke in second corinthians chapter 2 verses 15 he says for we are unto god the sweet savour of christ now, now you, you understand the scent that he spoke about in Isaiah 14 verses 7 the scent thereof which is as the wine of lebanon this is the scent paul connects to in second corinthians 2 15 and he says for we are unto god a sweet savour of christ in them that are saved and in them that perish to the one we we are to the one we are the savour of death and to death and to the other the savour of life and to life in other words this presence commands something it will either revive you or offend you but it does something your kind of anointing will either annoy people or give people life. But it won't meet a person and it doesn't feel anything. If they don't feel anything, then you're political. I refuse to be political. I choose to be on the realm that gives life. On the vibrations that release life. And for those who are for damnation, it's death. Who are opposed to the will and the purposes of God it shall be death. When you carry this presence, you'll make many friends, but you'll also have many enemies. But that's okay. Because God too goes through what you're going through. I always ask myself of a story that I never had any preacher preach or I never read in any book. I, this was one of those things I never had a preacher preach or anybody comment about. There was an event that took place in John chapter 18. I'll get to the verse a little bit, but let me give us a foundation of this. Look, Mark, Matthew, the synoptic gospels, have an account of the Christ going into the garden of Gethsemane to pray. How many of you remember the time when Jesus went to the garden to pray? Remember he went with Peter, James and John and he tells them tarry here 
pray while I pray. You remember that event when he's in the garden? Mark writes about it. Jesus entering that garden. Luke writes about it. Matthew writes about it. John doesn't enter, write about Jesus entering that garden. Gethsemane. If you go in the gospel of John, you don't write, find the word garden there. I mean Gethsemane. You don't find Gethsemane, the word Gethsemane there. Now, the reason why many people lose or miss the revelation here is because they don't connect the synoptic Mark, Matthew, Luke, the synoptic gospels, and John. They don't connect them together to see the full picture of what God was trying to give us. But Luke gave us a clue. When Luke talks about that moment in Gethsemane, he introduces something unique. He says that this was a routine, a very uh, deliberate practice that was common with the Christ to go on the Mount of Olives to pray. At least Luke recognizes that he always used to go to the Mount of Olives to pray. He used to go there. It was a common thing. He always used to go there. Every now and then, when you study Luke, he mentions it somewhere. So we know that there was a place where Jesus usually used to go to pray. The uniqueness of that last hour or the last hours of his last days of his life was that this time he went into Gethsemane. One part of the mountain olives to pray different gardens within the mountain. You understand? Now, Luke, Mark, and Matthew are telling us he goes in there to pray, leaves these three to pray. Oh, that place of agony, my father, if it be willing, take this cup of suffering from me. But if it be your will, let us have this. But he's in a place of prayer. Shut up. He's, he's praying. Now, John chapter 18 takes us in Gethsemane. Why people miss it is because they don't mention Gethsemane. But it is in Gethsemane that we find ourselves. Now I want you to note this. He's from prayer. He has been praying. Now, how, how, oh, how does Judas know when he gets the Roman soldiers at the point when he's betraying the Christ? How does he know where the Christ was? Because he always knew where he went to pray. You get it? He always knew that this man used to isolate in a place of, in a garden, in some gardens there to pray. He always knew that that's where he goes to pray. So when he was looking for him, he knew where he would find him. You get the point now? So that's how then Judas knows where this man go, go, went. Sorry, In John 18, he tells you, and Judas also, which betrayed him, verses 2, knew the place for Jesus often times or oft times resorted thither with his disciples. He always knew where the man went to pray. You get it to that level? Now let's go back to this Gethsemane place. He's from a place of prayer. He is charging. Are you following what I'm saying? Verses 4, or maybe let's begin verses 3. Judas then having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees comes thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Verses 4, Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them, Whom ye seek? He walks to them because he knows what is coming. He asks the disciples, Who do you seek? Is that what your scriptures say? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also which betrayed him stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he. The Bible says they went backward and fell to the ground. They were... Who got it? This guy has been charging the whole night praying comes from dwelling in the presence of the Most High. He's under that shadow and he carries a commanding presence. These men come to capture him and they're under some spirit. He asks them, who do you come seeking for? They say, we come seeking for Jesus of Nazareth. And as they turn and he says, I am here, boom, power of the Holy Ghost. And they fell to the ground. That was not a man arrested by force. 
that moment had to exist for people to note, for you and I to recognize that Jesus going on the cross did not go because he was overpowered. He went to that, you got it? Oh, you got it, you got it. He went to that cross because he made up his mind to subdue the commanding presence on his life for your sake. Otherwise, they would not have touched him. This is how I know that John the Baptist should not have died because a dancing girl asked for his head because she pleased the king. This is how I know. Because it was not spoken anywhere prophetically that John should be beheaded. The man that carries the anointing of Elijah, this man that would command fire from heaven, the, the same spirit of Elias was upon this man. He said, none born by a woman was more anointed than that man. I refuse to die under the hand of the wicked. Something on your life should command something that tells the devil that that woman is a no-nonsense. That man, you don't just attack him anyhow. There is something on his life. When we had just started Fenero in La Bonita, a young man comes to me after service and he says, I was told about who you are and I'd planned to kill you. True story. He told me I'd planned to kill you. I hated you to that degree. So I came into this service. I'd, one of those days, now he's narrating his story. I came into the service to see who I should kill because I'd had very bad stories about you. The guy enters the meeting. The power of God hits him. I think people even left him in the room. Now he's preaching the gospel somewhere in eastern Uganda. <laughs> I said you're not going to die by the will of your enemies. Whether they are spiritual or physical. I told you when Bale once preaching the gospel. Me and a friend called Saul comes, a man attacks us. Swings a punch at Saul, Saul runs away. As he turns to, the spirit tells me this is the devil going to punch you. I scream in the name of Jesus. He was thrown about eight feet away. Boom. He stood up, dusted himself. Then I got boldness. I walked toward him and said, what? And he ran away. <laughs> commanding presence. Tell your neighbor, commanding presence. Otherwise, I was going to lose a tooth in, an oven, in, a, in, a, in a crusade. Are you following what I'm saying? This happened. Saul can repeat that to you. He was a Muslim man. He had come to beat us because we were, he found us in the middle of leading his wife to confession. She had believed. <laughs> the devil is a liar. You're telling this woman, now say Lord Jesus, a punch comes. This spirit interrupted the harvest. You get my point? Uh-uh. Are you following what I'm saying? Tell your neighbor, capture this thing. It will change your life. Let's get to our feet. Oh, 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 oh.
words to you or upon your lives. See, the Bible says in Hebrews that even those which died as martyrs, the Bible says they refused deliverance having seen or having desired to obtain a greater resurrection. They just refused deliverance, but it was available for them. And if anybody should die for Christ as a martyr and all of that, yes, there is a greater glory for that sacrifice and we celebrate that. But if it is not in the will of God for you to take that shot, I decree and I declare that the presence on your life is available to preserve you from all evil in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I speak upon your life that that commanding presence tonight as a clock comes upon your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus. May it command your days. May it speak into your years. May it speak into your seasons. May it speak into the times ahead. I decree and I declare that it will announce you right. It will introduce you light, right. It will give you the visibility that you'll need. Kings will come to your rising. Gentiles will come to your light. Strangers will serve you. You will not struggle. You will not strive favor goes before you in the name of Jesus his goodness is with you in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and I declare that you'll not struggle you will not fail in the name of Jesus you will not beg in the name of Jesus whatever you need for your provision you are trapped by the very presence your name will be spoken in places of power influence and affluence it shall go before you in every nation you shall go to speak good and Align and position men to agree with what God has placed on your life. Everything prayed shall be so and not otherwise. Take a few seconds and just celebrate God because it is done. 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 Now one more thing before we go home. If you're there and you say, I've never received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I want to take my relationship with God personal and go to the next level of relating with God. I want to walk with Him. I want to be with Him. I want to build a love relationship with God. Come and I pray with you right now. Come and I pray with you. If you're there and you say, I want to be born again, come and I pray for you now. Come and I pray with you now. It's the last thing we want to do before we go home. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come, come wherever you are. I know a God whose mercy and kind, faithful and rich. I'm the apple of his eyes, the soul that fills his heart. Every morning, noon, and night, he loved me when I didn't care. Passion till I kept running back into his son. Look how he turned my life around, made me a shining star. His glory to on live stream in the streaming centers 607 by the way walk in front we are seeing you even to, from, as far as manifest South Sudan we're seeing you live It 
took me from the miry clay, set my feet upon the rock, and standing in his righteous name. Oh, 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 he took away my sin and shame, gave me a brand new name. He's beloved and he's redeemed. Oh, 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 look how he turned my life around, gave me a shining light. His glory to Soroti, we are seeing you. Manifest smile, we are seeing you. Manifest Lira, we are seeing you. I will worship him forever. Manifest Marara, we are seeing you. Listen to me. Repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died for my sins and you are raised my glory. Today I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. Put up your hands. Right now I want to release the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God is touching you now. Changing your life. Anointing you. Power of the Holy Ghost. May God use you. May he establish you. May he position you in Jesus name. Amen. Apostle Emma, come and attend to that gentleman. God is delivering him today. Today. The spirit in him looked at me and wanted to run away. Very wise that you. Thank you, Lord. Sickness is living struggle and strife put them down by the way the spirit of God is moving here and I sense him so mighty spirit of a sovereign Lord deliver your people change your people touch your people move your people establish your people help that lady with a baby help that lady with a baby hold her hold her power of the Holy Ghost receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit God is going to use you God is taking you far 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 in the name of jesus amen now those of you who can walk i want you to walk to those chairs there i want to take your names and numbers because i want to be praying for you okay i want to be calling you to check on you to make sure that you're okay and the best gift you can give yourself is to keep coming to church okay god bless you god bless you the rest of us see you tomorrow in the name of jesus RG or download the Finero app to stay up to date with all the ministry programs. The Finero app is available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. Join our online family, spread the love and follow us on Instagram, Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Finero, make manifest.